Jesse, a uh, pleasure to have you with us, and congrats. You're the first Indigenous chair in the council's history. How do you think things will change under your watch? Well, Dennis, it might be a little early to make any predictions, uh, big sub substantive predictions. Um, I certainly hope to continue the work that the council has already started in terms of its Indigenous program and a more thorough inclusion of Indigenous people and, frankly, some autonomy for us within that system. But also, I look forward to furthering its work to include and deepen the roster of artists and organizations that already engage uh, with the council. And, I, you know, we're in a moment where so much is changing, Dennis, not just at the council, but mm -hmm. all over the world because of the pandemic and reckoning around racial injustice. And I think uh, Canada Council is not immune uh, to those things. Artists in Canada are not immune to those issues. So I think it's likely significant uh, things will change. And I think my role is to try to make sure that Canada Council remains adaptable and supporting all venues for Canadian culture and the artists uh, across this land that we can. Jesse, do you feel Indigenous artists have been getting a, a fair shake from the Canada Council? for the arts compared to mainstream artists? Uh, I would say it's getting better, uh, Dennis. You know, this is an organization that when it was initially founded in 1957, Indigenous arts weren't even considered arts. They were considered craft or primitive. Uh, they weren't actually eligible for funding. And so some 60 some odd years later, uh, here we are uh, with me about to head this organization. It now has a dedicated stream for Indigenous uh, arts that is actually quite broader than uh, it is usually offered for other arts in terms of the sort of activities it will fund. It's led by Indigenous people. So I think it's be certainly better than it was, but I'm not here to say that it is perfect or that we are all the way where we need to arrive at. And this is just part of the work that I've been doing for a long time to try to get our communities better represented and not just better represented, Dennis, but in charge to have the ability for us to decide, who, you know, the arts and the culture and how this money that is meant for us is actually dispersed and who it gets to. And so I think increasingly that's what we should be searching for in these systems, even at a Crown Corporation, is for Indigenous people to have autonomy and self-determination. Yeah, you told APTN News Online that being a, appointed the head of a Crown Corporation was somewhat of an uneasy position for you. Uh, why did you decide to take it on? <laughs> I'm st there's moments, been moments in the last couple of days, Dennis, I've still wondered. Um, I guess... You know, I, I've been on the board of the Canada Council for the past three years. I've served on boards um, in the arts and culture sector in Canada, including on several Indigenous organization boards for many, many years, going back uh, 20 years at least. And I consider it um, valuable work, uh, important work, and a way to bring some authority and, dis and decision making um, from our communities into those processes. And ultimately, I think for me, um, you know, this crown um, is at least trying to do things, is at mm -hmm. least trying to not only um, present a different relationship, but actually build a different relationship. And so I felt quite confident that this was a crown that I could help and help for our communities um, uh, as well, and not just our communities, but really all Canadians and all marginalized communities within within Canada. So, you know, I can say there's not many crowns that I would think I would want to lead, mm -hmm. um, but for me, after long thought, this was one I think um, I can absolutely work with and make change. You mentioned, uh, you know, it is early days, it just been announced, and we are in the middle of a pandemic, which will definitely make things a challenge, but, do you have uh, some, some first moves in mind? Uh, I, I do. I'm not sure I will share them at this moment, uh, Dennis. Um, we will have a vacancy to fill. There will be a vacancy that will be filled on the, the board because of my departure into the chair position. And I believe that announcement will hopefully come relatively soon. That is a similar process to me, which is it's a government uh, appointment. 
Um, and I think for us, uh, issues of sustainability, inequity, um, representation uh, are going to be really front of mind for the board. You know, these are very challenging times for a variety of reasons for artists, uh, arts institutions, and audiences. And we want to make sure that we can respond as we already have with our COVID relief uh, programs, which is now in phase two, earmarked for marginalized uh, communities. Um, but we, we're obviously going to need to adapt and help the whole sector adapt to whatever the new reality uh, is we will face. And I look forward to that challenge. I think in moments like this, Dennis, there's a great opportunity to reorient and reprioritize. And I look forward to doing that. Well, Jesse, uh, we look forward to seeing the work you do and uh, congrats from us again here. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chimigwich, Dennis. That's Jesse Wenty, the newly named chair of the Canada Council for the Arts.